It's composed of uh, roughly about 150 uh, engineers and scientists and researchers and uh, about 200 additional operators and technicians helping them. Uh, because we, we just don't do research, we also uh, manage uh, pilot line and uh, what we call the golden line. No, we, we develop all our process ourselves. Um, and we do, we do research from uh, material to systems. So, um, so that includes all the materials we use in, in the, the modules. Uh, uh, we, we do a lot of research on crystallization because uh, we, we make our own multi-crystalline wafers. So we develop our own uh, high-performance multi. Uh, then we do research on modules and developing different designs of modules. Um, could be uh, double glass, uh, bifacial, for example, or a different uh, uh, scheme of light trapping inside the modules or different type of uh, um, uh, structure. Um, then we do research on systems, uh, uh, simulations of systems, uh, smart electronic embedded into the modules, etc. We achieved much better than that. Over the last three years, the average cost reduction was about 12% per year. I've done some graph on that. Um, it's roughly about the same. You, if, you, if you look at the, uh, the, all the non for the moment, silicon is pretty flat. Silicon feedstock is pretty flat. So there is no uh, major improvement there. But in um, uh, non-silicon costs, if you divide that in three parts, one is the, um, the ingot and wafer formation, uh, two is the cell uh, formation, and then the module assembly, uh, it's pretty much equivalent, to the, the, same, the same decrease in all those three segments. Yeah, it's about 2% in efficiency increase, um, and the rest is uh, um, reduction in cost in all, all other aspects. Um, so, for example, we increase enormously our productivity. Over the last five years, uh, I, I count pretty much a productivity increase by a factor of five. Um, so, uh, it means in terms of uh, number of people employed per megawatt. For example, increasing the number of wafers in the in the diffusion tubes, increasing the number of lanes per per tools, um, increasing automation for loading the, the PCVD in, uh, furnaces, um, in increase of uh, automation in modules, for example. It depends very much where, <laughs> um, which customer. Basically, there are so many different markets and so many different customers in each of those markets. It's so every, every customer has to do their LCOE calculation. Um, we have a, a rule of the thumb, which is not exactly correct because you cannot use it for every market, uh, every location. But rule of the thumb, if you, if you could make a product with 10, watt, 10 additional watt per module, and one cent per watt, you pretty much in the in the right spot. If uh, if it costs two cents a watt uh, for just for ten watt additional, you're probably too expensive. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's right. We propose um, uh, quite a long time ago to to develop uh, modules for specific climate, specific level of irradiation, etc. So, for example, have uh, modules that are developed for desert application. For example, one of the things we did is develop um, uh, double glass modules. And the double glass modules is really a, uh, a real improving, an exercise of improving the reliability of the module. For particularly for very harsh climate, like deserts and tropics. Absolutely. We, 
we already have um, about 10% of our production in double glass modules and people demand it. And uh, what I see is that the whole industry is following us on that. We've been the, the pioneer on double glass and uh, everybody is following us. We, um, it's, um, it's used and it should be the only module used on water. Uh, people install PV on, mod on water and uh, those modules should be double glass because of, uh, of um, moisture uh, protection. Um, in tropical country, only double glass resists PID. All the other modules suffer from PID in uh, tropical countries. Um, it's a, anti PID is a great thing, and the industry has come together with uh, technology to prevent PID. It's wonderful, but you could always create PID in a module. You just increase the temperature and increase humidity and you increase the voltage. You could always uh, create PID. Well, per Perk is definitely the, the, the winner technology for the moment. Um, so there will be a transition uh, from um, full aluminium BSF towards PER. Per cell, in both in mono and multi. Of course, every technology will bring a new uh, mode of failure. Always. Every time. When, uh, when uh, IBC came in, you uh, you had the uh, potential induced degradation that appeared first on IBC cells, and then it was discovered on the other cells. Uh, it was a, the two different um, two different uh, phenomenon, but it's the same name. But every time uh, you have a new technology, a new design, you have a risk to uh, generate a new um, mechanism of degradation. The same thing as every time we bring a new material. We could do all the tests we want. Uh, there is always a risk that a new mechanism of degradation that we didn't test for will appear. We'll solve it. It's, um, it's not uh, completely solved yet, but we have um, a, a good understanding of what's happening. Um, and um, I I think we'll, we'll solve it very quickly. The, um, the issue with uh, multi compared to mono, um, in the mono uh, wafer there is uh, one significant defect uh, that is generated by, um, uh, which is light induced, um, generated by light. Um, we need to deactivate that defect and we found a way to do that. Uh, with multi crystalline, the problem is that there are many different defects. It's a much more random material. Uh, we experience for the moment on the market a very low price for mono wafers. So um, we get uh, better um, uh, power benefits with the, uh, the mono perk and, um, and the cost increase is, uh, is negligible compared to, uh, to these. So, so right now, um, we have a, a very high demand for mono perk. Since our, our perk production capacity is limited, right now we have uh, switched to uh, more mono perk than multi. Yes, that's right. Well, what we have right now, we experience the fact that in uh, monocrystalline production, the, uh, the manufacturers have switched to diamond wire sewing, where is most of the production in multi it's still with, uh, with the slurry um, wire cells. And um, so, and it's a question of capex, we have to um, um, increase, uh, invest in uh, diamond wire cell, and that's cost money for the moment, we prefer to put money in, uh, in increased capacity than just uh, changing machines. But, uh, but the, the change will, will happen over the, the next few years. And uh, when that happens, the, again, the price of uh, multi goes down. People talk a lot about uh, solar cell development, but there is a lot of um, development to be done in the uh, multi-crystalline wafer, uh, in the quality of the material. Uh, 
um, we're working a lot on that and like I said we uh, we developed now a wafers that have um, so p type multi crystalline wafer that have lifetime way above one millisecond so uh, this is uh, the, the typical lifetime that you see in anti monocrystalline wafers for example um, um, so that is big part of our, our, our activity N type is interesting, but uh, I'm pretty sure that P type hasn't said his last word. There is a long life for P type. I mean, the, the standardization in the P type technology is so great that um, we'll get um, lower price with P type with the same efficiency than N type.